Hey! Salutation! New week, new facts, new way for you to sound smarter than you are. You will finally have something to say during awkward silence. But today, did you know that it's Bubble Wrap Appreciation Day? Yes, it's definitely an invention worth celebrating. Do it me, it's me with my Bubble Wrap doing a sort of wrap. Yes, it's my Bubble Wrap. Before becoming what it's now known as a stress relief toy, Bubble Wrap had an unexpected but really interesting beginning. Invented in 1957, Alfred and Mark, the two inventors, decided to seal together two shower curtains and they thought that would be a great wallpaper but quickly they realized that people didn't find the idea as great the project wasn't successful but Alfred and Mark didn't give up on the little bubble of air oh no, they are not like that those two so they changed the tactic and they marketed it as you probably guessed it greenhouse isolation yeah I need to remove that thing, I'm sweating so much, it's dripping after being a wallpaper a greenhouse in solution. Let me introduce you. The portable sauna. Thank you very much. Ah, gosh, much better. I keep the hat though. So where was I? Greenhouse insulation. In 1960, Bubble Wrap was branded in the corporation they founded, and it was not until a year later that its use in protective usage was discovered by a marketer. Mark, Alfred, I think I have an idea. IBM was the first client to use bubble wrap to protect the computer during shipping. If that is not a story you can use to impress people with your knowledge, I don't know what is then. Commergence. Commergence Day. Is that on purpose a tricky word to mark my accent? What does that even mean? Bad tempered person, especially an old one. Bad tempered? Old one? How stupid they are. They think they are clever. They know nothing about nothing, let me tell you. Anyways, I need to find someone to hate on. Ah, my stupid back. Today, the 30th of January, and I have good news because today it's National Escape Day, a day meant to escape stress. Kids, are you at school? Skip it! Are you a worker? Call sick! It's the perfect valid reason! Are you in jail? Well, you know what to do! Mm. I need to also cross on them. Would you really want to miss that? Stas. Sorry, I glitched. Could be a virus. Well, speaking of it, a uh, bad today. Did you know that the 30th of January 1982 in the US, Richard, a 15 years old high school student wrote what was going to become the first computer variant to be released in the wild. Richard the Geek, the computer nerd, well he said it himself. He created Elk Cloner as a prank and wrote it only for Apple II systems, which was the most popular home computer at that time. The virus was spreading via floppy disk. I mean, some of you may remember floppy disk. I used to have so many of those, mainly games. To conclude with that story, Richard added a poetic note because the virus had a poem signature. Nice joke, Rich. Nice prank. Do you know that you started an annoying trend? Because virus nowadays are a real pain. It's not a joke anymore. Rich. 31st of January and today it's Eat Brussels Sprouts Day. But it's too bad. I won't be able to eat any. Oh, I won't be able to enjoy all the health benefit of it. Oh, not because I don't like it, nah. No. Oh, because today it's also sports type day. Well, let's move on. If you're still here, it's that you don't have enough. You want to know more random facts to use them as randomly as they are? I don't blame you. Here is the next one. Let me remove that first. Next fact. Let's talk about ham. Why? It's ham day? Who cares? Nope, but ham the chimp. Because it's today, in 1961, that ham the chimp, the first non-human hominid, was launched into space as part of America's space program. His name wasn't because he was an undercover pig. Is that supposed to be funny? But it's an acronym for the lab that prepared him for the mission. Ham wasn't only a passenger. Oh no. More than that, more than that, he had tasks to do. He was taught 
to push the lever within five seconds of seeing a blue flashing light. Wow, it feels so complicated. He was receiving a mild electric shock if he was failing and a banana treat if he was doing it correctly. Before his flight, he was only known as number 65. Just another number on the long list. He was renamed Ham upon his successful return to Earth. Welcome back, buddy. All that because officials did not want bad press that will come from the death of a named chimpanzee. So there is no bad press in capturing, experimenting, in some way torturing on animals. Only the death during the mission will be. Because it's also fine the death before the mission. But it doesn't have any name, who cares? Who made those rules? After the flight, Ham stayed captured and lived 17 years in a zoo until his death. And of course, they wanted to have him stuffed. But a negative public reaction made them abandon this idea. His skeleton, though, is since held in the National Museum of Health and Medicine in the US. 1st of February, we are now deep in the winter. And of course, it's walking naked there. Are you cold? Well, what an idea to walk naked as well. What? Mainly your feet are cold. Well, what a coincidence! Because my friend Halls certainly had the same problem. But unlike you lot, he didn't complain about it. He tried to find a solution and he found one. On the 1st February 1918, he filled the pattern for a unique device to warm feet by compressing air and expelling it into the shoes. How does it work, you would ask? No. Like that, you need to walk. The clever mechanism was in the heel of the shoe. Yes, you need to like wearing here. A piston compresses air in the cylinder when you press the foot down. The compression heats up the air and is then expelled into the shoe. No battery needed. How clever is that though? The moral of the story is, if you are naked but only your feet are cold, put your heel on and go have a stroll. Thank you very much. Yes, it's crepe day. And while enjoying your crepe, you may want to open yourself a bottle of your favorite drink. And right there, you just find yourself in the perfect setup to socialize and to show up your knowledge. You know the little cap you just got by opening a bottle? Well, it's on that day, the 2nd February 1892, that the crown cork, the crown cap, was patented by his inventor, William Painter. Originally, it had 24 teeth and the cork seal paper backing to prevent contact with the drink and the metal cap. Nowadays version has only 21 teeth. If that is not a good fact to know... One, two, three, and 21. Yep, fact checked. And that's it. Story can be short as well. And here we are, Sunday the 3rd, chilling day. You are now updated. You started this video with zero knowledge, nothing. If you stayed until the end, you are probably the smartest person around. So smart that you want to hit that subscribe button. Ciao.